Time to start working on the vanity! Woo! Right now, we're working on our vanity counter piece. Um, this is the squaring cut because the light edge doesn't necessarily have square edges. <laughs> but we need the back to have a square edge. And so we're seeing what's going to be dropped versus what's going to stay on the counter. This isn't the full size. It still needs to be a little bit longer. So we'll have to attach a piece down here. I'll put my mask on. Mask Pro! Yeah! If your blade gets caught, a wedge is always really handy. Nice work. Pretty class. That's good enough. We're not building a timber frame, but this will be good enough for a countertop. <laughs> yeah, if it goes like that. So let's measure. It's not a lot bit. of extra usable space, but the idea is that it's like just like a skinny so little. Nice. Pretty good. good? Pretty good. So. So line that up with the edge. And then push that a little closer, like yep. that, sweetie. Yep. And then can I jigsaw that one? Yep. And you're gonna circular saw this one? Yep. That'll work. Black walnut. Light walnut. Light walnut. Take a peek and then we'll put it back down and clamp it. Cool. That looks good. That'll work. Cool. Let's see how it looks. It's on its way. It's on its way. So now that this is dry, um, we can make another little piece to go on the back of it. This piece right here wasn't quite deep enough to meet the wall. So we're just gonna make a little guy Probably not gonna see it that much because it's gonna be under a sink in a super tight space. So we're just gonna Frankenstein it together. I did it! Good job. That shit smell like cheese! <laughs> That's the weirdest smell. Good job. Ugh. So some of you might be wondering, Brian, Aaron, how the hell is this clamped down? Well, right here, I don't know if you can see that. I think you can probably see it on this other side better. 
Right here on the ends, what we did was we toenailed in screws through this plywood, through the table, and then we clamped the table down. So by doing that, allowed the piece to actually be clamped in place using screws through the end. Now something to think about is these ends will never be seen because both of them are facing walls on both sides. So doing this technique is worth it, especially if you don't have very much clamping room and our, circuit, our table saw is not doing so great these days. So um, this is a good idea and Erin did a great job. You could tell that she was just right on the line yeah, for cutting it. that piece. <laughs> Super proud of you. Rip that good. Roll about like that, or like that. Oh, actually, that way fits better. You that fits that as... Way. What's that? Well, this is what Santa Claus brought this year. Thanks, Santa Claus. Dirty old Santa. Uh, we got a nice planer. Check that out. Oh, damn, not sponsored, not sponsored. Oh. Wow. Wow. Yeah, so, there you go. Oh, yeah. it's not even that loud. No. All right, let's start with maybe a 64th. Oh, damn, you're going to love this. Public safety announcement. All right, guys, so our 110 volt panel, our sub panel for all the outlets and lights and stuff like that in the bus is not finished being set up yet. So we were hooking the panel up just to a 40 amp outlet. Um, actually, it's on a 40 amp circuit in the barn, but the outlet's probably 15 amp, and we were connecting it to a what seemed to be a heavy duty extension cord. Well, this is why you really shouldn't do that. So. Earlier, we smelled something, and we're, it was just like, Aaron was like, oh, it just doesn't smell right in here. Well, after doing some investigating, the panel looked completely fine, but the smell got stronger towards the back of the bus where the panel's at. So we we're following the, the, uh, all the lines and everything around, and guess what? This guy here was melting. This is what we had the panel hooked up to, so we're not going to DIY this anymore. We're gonna wait till we get the rest of our components in to finish properly hooking it up because it requires heavier gauge wire than what this uh, cord has. So it, what ended up happening was we were just drawing too much for this particular cord, which caused it to heat up. And that's how electrical fires start. So we're very lucky that Aaron smelled that. And whenever I went back and did some, my usual search to see what, where the problem was, Everything looked great on the panel, but it was at this connection, which was almost outside the bus, that we were having the problem. So be safe, y'all.
Cool. Oh, that's nice. That's going to be great. Nice. Sweet. Just do a little bit of this action. That should be pretty good. Yeah. Do you like that height? Yep. I think so. Yeah. A little lower? Yep. Something like that? Yeah, more like that. I was just considering that maybe we put it even lower so that we have even more above space. The bowl would still be pretty high. Yeah. I think we should play with it. All right, let's play with it. Okay. All right, y'all, so now that the counter is nice and dry, it's all glued together, we still need to finish the top. We'll get to that here in a second. Yeah. But we really want to dry fit the height of it so that we can place the hole, figure out where the faucet's gonna go. Yep, and there's no better way to do that than put in some furring strips. So we'll put in some furring strips underneath it so the counter can hold its own while we both stand in front of it and test how high it is. Um, and make sure that we like it, but also make sure that we optimize the space for a little bit of storage. We don't have a lot of things, but we got enough things that it would be nice to put them somewhere. Yeah, bathroom <laughs> things. It might seem totally crazy to put a countertop this low, but when I stood in the space with the counter kind of low, I felt like it gave us so much more room above, and I thought, hey, maybe this would create some kind of an illusion for Brian that he had more space. So we're gonna toss in some furring strips at this lower level and just see how it feels. What do you think, Braun? She's trying to trick me with illusions. So basically these two will we'll have to, whenever we uh, cut the face plate, we'll have to measure up to where the center is on both of those and then drill a hole that's big enough so that these could pass through um, and then put the flanges on. But I think that is probably a pretty good spot for it, mm -hmm. depth wise. Yeah. Do you like the height? Yeah. Like if I was brushing my teeth and needed to swish, swish, swish. Yeah, let's see what that looks like. Oh, brush my teeth, and then nice. And then this looks like it goes directly above the drain, so it'll it'll diffuse the water nicely. And then um, cool. I like that spot too. So if we pull this this way just a little bit, we'll get a little bit more of our corner back. Yeah, there we go. And then this guy. Drop that there. Put this guy here. Faux wall. Faux wall. That's about how it's going to go. So that's where the hole is going to be. <laughs> now we can cut the hole in the counter. Yep. And then we can plumb the drain. So I'm happy with this. Like, that's a good height, yeah. I think. Yeah. And that's plenty of room to like wash the hands yep. and it's low enough that it won't splash everywhere. Yep. Got room for the faucet tap handle. <laughs> there it is. We have a hole in our vanity table. We do. One more piece. Look at that. Nice. That works. Yeah, that looks really good. <laughs> 
That's a call, yeah. All right, so we just got these batteries off the charger. They've been going for a couple days. Uh, it only really needed a few hours. And let's test the voltage. Let's see, DC. Twelve point eight two, nice. Twelve point four eight all right. That's close enough to each other. Forty nine Fahrenheit. Also forty nine, which is approximately eight Celsius. So they're not too cold, they're not frozen, uh, because when they're frozen, apparently lead acids don't do well when it's freezing. So now that they're all charged up, we're gonna put them back in the bus and we're gonna attempt to start it. I've had the engine block heater going for about two hours now, so it's probably nice and ready to go. Um, so let's see if this fixes our starting issue. File. Ugly bits and some sharp bits that need to be taken down. Let's go see what Brian's doing. He's in the dark. <laughs> Going good. Glad you know what you're doing. Ooh, it is cold out. So we've had the um, the engine heater heating for two hours or so. The batteries are now installed. So we've got our little exhaust diverter set up. So far so good. Yeah, so we got the bus up to temperature. It did really, really well, and it doesn't look like uh, the spot is leaking at all from where we put the engine block heater. So I would call that a success, and it's good to know that the batteries really don't like starting the, the bus whenever it gets cold because it drops the amount of usable amps. So there you go. Still kind of a gap between the rubber and the edge so i might uh just come out a little further yep so that the rubber sits flush By wiping this down with a wet cloth, it pops the grain, and uh, then we'll sand it down with 220 grit to uh, knock all the top hairs off. We did this on accident on the kitchen countertop, and come to find out it's actually a good practice to do, because the first time this gets wet, the grain will pop. Oh yeah. Definitely made it shine. That definitely popped the grain. <laughs> <laughs> I just wiped the whole sink with mineral spirits. Not sure if that's okay. I was trying to get rid of the marks from where we uh, where we braze it, trying to get rid of this dark ring around it because I thought maybe it was dirt um, or like soot. 
um, but it's not coming off, so that's okay. Look how cool that looks, though. I'm kind of all right with this beat up look. I like it beat up. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Pretty cool. Doing a good job. So now we gotta figure out how to level it out and fill in that gap so that we can support the end of the counter. There you go. Pilot holes! It does have a rubber gasket on it. Um, however, because this is hand pounded and it's copper, there's a possibility that, um, do you have the next piece? There's a possibility that if this doesn't seat perfectly, uh, that it might have a leak. So to combat that, we're just putting silicone, which is gonna seat on that. Try not to get too messy with that. Yeah, that's how it goes. All right. Oh my God, that looks so good. <laughs> so we've got a plastic washer here. Normally the plastic washer would go against the rubber washer, but because the rubber washer, this isn't gonna spin against the rubber washer and the rubber washer is gonna stay in place, I'd rather it just seat against the wood. And then I'll put the plastic washer here. Um, which will reduce the amount of friction between the nut and the wood, allowing it to clamp on tighter. Make sure that that is oriented how we want it. And then now, as we spin the nut on the bottom, it starts getting tighter. Ready? Yep. What's cool is that will dry clear. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Oh. Nice. 